Welcome back to Coronavirus University, where I do mathematics during the pandemic. Uh, Rob Kustner, I'm the course chair for Math 235 this fall. and We're going to finally um, solve that linear system we've um, been looking at for the last couple of short lectures. Um, last time we saw how to encode the system in an augmented matrix, and the time before we looked at the geometry of the system and saw that we should expect a unique solution. And I think you've already solved it, but let's understand the algorithm row reduction that works for any system, not just this one. And will let us know not only whether there's a solution, whether it's unique, but how many parameters of solutions there are if there's more than, a, a, more than one solution. Um, let me try to do this in parallel with what I did in about a minute in the post office with little girls and probably what many of you would have done. Um, we already figured out that one of the equations is essentially trivial, so we're really only going to be solving for B and L. And one thing we can do is add this equation to this equation. In other words, what I said to the girls was if I, if I know that B plus L is 10 and B minus L is 4, then B plus B plus L minus L is 14. In other words, 2B equals 14. And um, that, of course, that is easily solved, namely B is 7. And uh, once we know B is 7, then, of course, we could substitute back in for B equals 7 and include that, that L is 3. Okay. So that was an easy way to do it. And for simple equations, that's probably faster than even encoding it into a, into a matrix. But let's try to do the same process and see actually what we did here, okay? So um, this step, in some sense, was what? We were taking the second equation and we added it to the third equation. So I might write here something like um, 2, or rather 3. I take equation 3, say, and I add equation 2 to it. So 2 became 3 plus 2. Okay. And that's the equation 2b equals 14. So what happens here? Let's, let's take row 3 here, which remember row 3 corresponds to equation 3, and replace it with row 3 plus row 2. <coughs> okay. So we're going to get a new augmented matrix, and um, maybe I'll just indicate what happens with the third row at the moment. We can do another step in the same matrix. If I do that, then the third row becomes what? Well, if I add the rows, of course, this row to this row, this becomes 2, this becomes 0, and this becomes 0, and this becomes 14. I'm adding 10 to 4, so that's 14. Okay. And, well, I don't know if you want to do this step next. What, what did we do there? What was that step there? We multiplied this equation by a half, okay? Or we divided by 2, and we got that equation. We can do that step later, but we can just do this in our head. We like. And then we concluded that L was 3, and that came from somehow working with back substituting into this equation. Let's try to do something similar, but using only these row operations. So this is, this is a row operation. Let me, let me write this. This is a row operation. And this process is known as row reduction. Okay? So, I'll copy what we had before, so we'll do one step at a time to make things easy. What we had before, we didn't do anything to row 2, that was still 10. And row 1 was still 0, 0, 1, and 29. Okay? Okay. 
Let's do another row operation. We're allowed to divide by a non-zero number or multiply by a non-zero number, same effect. And let's do that. So this is the step. I'm going to take the third row and I'm going to replace it by one half times the third row. That'll be one of the steps. And then perhaps we'll do one more step so I don't run out of room, but maybe we can do it in the individual steps. So if I do this, then what? I get one, excuse me, let me do this in red. Keep things colorful. One, zero, zero, and then seven. There's the augmentation line. And I'll leave the zero, zero, one, 29 at the top. And um, let's do another step though. So I could, this is really two row operations. This is another row operation. So I'll do two row operations in the same matrix here. I'm also gonna subtract the new row three from row two. Or if you like, I could say we're also going to do, if I use the old row three, I'm going to take two and send it to two minus a half row three. Okay, so I'm subtracting a multiple of row, excuse me, yeah, the old row three, that old row three. So when I do that, I'm taking that old one, it becomes that, when I multiply by half, if I subtract half of it, subtracting this from that, I get what? I get zero, one, zero, and subtracting that from that gives me 10 minus seven is three, okay? So I hope those steps are clear. We combined this into, we did two more row operations on this one, so really there are three. And now I'm going to do one more step. So this is already in a form we can read off the solution, right? Because what does this equation say, right? Remember, this is the L, this is the B column, this is the L column, this is the M column. So what does this equation say? This way says 0B plus 0L plus 1M equals 29. So that's the M equals 29, which you have down there. This one says what? 0B plus 1L plus 0M equals 3. In other words, L equals 3. So we can actually fill in L equals 3 here, which we knew. So that checks that. And of course, this one says 1B plus 0L plus 0M equals 7. So decoding the, the information from the augmented matrix to give me an equation. So again, B, 1B, 0L, 0M equals 7. In other words, B equals 7. So that checks that off. And as we said, M equals 29. We check that one off also. Okay? So that's enough. But there's a convention, actually, that we tend to use, which is um, we make something called a, an echelon or a staircase. And uh, it's one more step, one more type of row operation. We've done multiplying a row by a non-zero number or adding a row to a row. There's one more type of row operation that we can use, which is to swap rows. And if I swap the first and the third row, okay, then I get to what's sometimes called the reduced row echelon form of the matrix. So we're going to swap row one and row three here. When we do that, we get to a matrix that looks very nice. It's got ones going down the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And then the augmentation, well, this seven comes up there, the three ends up there, and the 29 is down there. And that's the solution. So this right here, the, uh, the new augmentation is the solution. This is known as the 
row reduced echelon form of the matrix. Here's the echelon. The echelon is this staircase. It's got zeros below it and ones resting on the treads of the staircase. And you can read off B, this is the B column, B equals 7, L equals 3, M equals 29. Same information as this one, but this is the more canonical form. And it's, as I said, it's called the, the, the RREF. This thing here is the, the RREF of the original augmented matrix. And RREF is short. So RREF means, maybe I'll write it a little darker, RREF. This is the row reduced echelon form of the augmented matrix. Okay? And the solution to this system is read off by reading the augmented part of that. Okay, so that's the, so this is the augmented matrix. We're going to call that A. This augmented matrix A has that aria. And here's the solution. So when you have a unique solution, there we have it. This is a wonderful algorithmic way to, to work it out even though you could have probably done it by guessing earlier. They said the geometry let us know that the solution should be unique. If you trust your algebra and arithmetic, you see that it's unique. And here's a nice way to, to see that it is unique. Each column has a one, okay? And each row has a one. And that's what guarantees uniqueness in this case, okay? So we're going to move on to other things next time. That's all I have to say for the beginning of this topic.